Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. As you can see, a little bit of difference going on inside the old Forerunner. I have a different lens on here today. What I am testing is this new Sony 35mm f1.8 APS-C lens. I picked this up yesterday, and then yesterday I was just so overwhelmed with the shit that I had to do with work and all that kind of stuff that I just, I didn't have time to actually put together a video and I was going to do a short and, and I just didn't bother because it was all going to be rushed. So here we are today and I'm on my way to the UPS store. Then we're going to go to Great Neck Park, the usual testing grounds. And then we're going to go to three ships for some bean and I got a call at three. So kind of a whirlwind tour. So, okay, let's go out here and test this. And I'm just gonna set this up in various spots so that it's not just my melon in the, in the, in the screen because I'm looking at it there and it's just like, eh. I know you all wanna see my melon, but not that close. Let's go for a walk. Pretty awful walking around back here with all of the roots and the branches and the pine needles. We all know that the active Steady shot on here sucks. Now, this lens, I forgot to mention, also has OSS on it. So the optical steady shot, which means that you can put this in standard, meaning not active stabilization, but standard stabilization, which you can't do unless you have a lens that has the OSS. And then you don't get the crop, but I think it's kind of shitty. Well, we all know everything about this is shitty. So here, I'm going to switch this and I'm going to show you how much you get back when you go from active to standard. Look at how much came back. Okay, so I'm not going to belabor that point. We all know that the crop, when you use active stabilization on the Sony ZV-E10, is just absolute shit. It just kills the, the framing. So here we are now though, and we're gonna, we're gonna walk. I'm gonna try to hold it the same way that I was so that you can see how the difference between steady and active. And again, we all know it's not gonna be great. More than likely, if I was gonna do this, I would do it with the gimbal just cause. Here's me walking normally. I've got one hand on one of the legs of this carbon fiber tripod. I'm using the Sue Ray, by the way. And then I have my other hand on the grip of the camera. Or I can go and just hold underneath the camera on the ball head. And you can see how jittery that is. So pretty much nothing good about this. Okay. So Neat little test. The 35 1.8 APS-C lens with optical steady shot. I mean, I guess if you put it on a better camera that had actual in-body image stabilization, it would probably be pretty awesome. Okay, kids, I'm gonna cut this pretty much right now. I have been very busy running around like a chicken without a head. I had that call at three. It actually went the whole hour. And then I decided that I was gonna do a couple things around the house that I wanted to do that I remembered. And when I came down here into the garage to do that, the Blue Angels flew over. They've been flying around all day practicing as have other jets. And it's figuratively killing me because I'm always driving in the Forerunner or I'm somewhere where I can't film them. So finally, I just ran inside. I grabbed my a7 IV, I put the 70 to 200 on it and ran outside and I got a small amount of footage. I wasn't quite sure how to set it because obviously I'm pointing up into the sunny sky. So everything was blown out. So I ran upstairs. I found my, uh, I got, I got another sized magnetic ring to hold the Freewell variable ND filters. But the problem is, is that I couldn't find the step up ring because I had to go from 77 to 82. So I ended up finding all that shit, putting it all together, came out here, tested it, tested which autofocus I wanted to use. And I also put it into 4K 60 in case I want to slow it down and be dramatic. And 
not a single jet has flown past. <laughs> you know how that goes. So I'm at least all set tomorrow. I am going to have my a7 IV set up for filming with that 70 to 200, but then I'm going to take the a7R4, which is set up for filming, I'm probably going to take it off a of medium burst speed and put it on high. And I think I might just leave the 70, to, uh, not the 70 to 200, the 200 to 600 on there so I can get some distance and, and try to capture as much as I can for film, you know, getting still shots. I'm so excited. So other than that, I have a pounding headache and I've had caffeine and it still hurts. So I think given that it's exactly five o'clock now, I'm probably either gonna go for a walk or I'm gonna hop on the board and go for a spin. I did wanna end this though in some place other than the Forerunner or at Great Neck Park. So I thought, why not do it in my garage so you can see all that crap that's hanging behind me whilst I'm using this 35 lens. Now, I have it about a yardstick in front of me or a meter stick, if you will, in front of me. And then I can reach directly behind me and touch the wall. So I got myself split so that you can see the white side and you can see where I ended the oak paneling just to give it a little bit of a different perspective so you can see how that works. I have it set at obviously 150th, 24 frames a second, but I have it at F1.8 and I had to close the garage door halfway and I'm probably, st I'm not blown out. My zebras aren't up, but I was because the sun reflecting off the buildings across the street coming through here were so bright. So the garage door is halfway down because I wanted some natural light in and I have Maddie moved over and she's blocking the worst of the reflection. And I think this looks pretty good. So I don't know, this is your first look at this 35 F1.8 OSS. AS, damn it, APS-C lens. What do you think? Does it look good? Does it look all right? Granted, again, I'm not gonna be using this thing for vlogging because I, I have to move it so far away and holding it straight out in front of me isn't doing any good. So when I vlog, I'll have my 10 to 20 on here most of the time and occasionally I'll use the 11. But I just, I don't know, I'm curious to see what you think because I know before when I used the 35G Master on the a7 IV, everybody was like, dude, that looked really good but that was an a7 IV full frame camera with a 35 millimeter G Master lens on it in 10 bit. This is only eight bit, but I still like it. So, all right, that's it. That's all I've got for you today. Let me know what you think down below. If you have any comments or questions also down below, as always, thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe and remember kids, forward and up.